Hello, I'm Elaine Lem here at Hi50, and as part of our occasional cookery videos, today I'm going to show you how to make a traditional spaghetti bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese was the stalwart of any 60s and 70s dinner party, but of course, like everything else, it fell out of fashion. But let me tell you, it is back. Everyone thinks they've got the recipe for spaghetti bolognese enough to make any self-respecting Italian cringe. Well, today I'm going to show you how to make the classic sauce, the way that it's made in Northern Italy. It involves using lots of chopped onion, carrot for sweetness, celery in there, which adds lots of flavor. Of course, we've got tomatoes and garlic. And I've got a few surprise ingredients to add in as well. So let's get cracking with our spaghetti bolognese sauce. First thing I've done is I've heated up this um, lovely large pan and I'm going to put in some olive oil. I recommend you don't use your best olive oil for this, but by the same token, don't be using sort of the, the cheapest stuff either because it tastes quite nasty. Add in a little bit of butter. And once that's melted, the first thing I'm going to put in here is some chopped bacon. You can use pancetta if you want, or just ordinary bacon's fine. This is smoked bacon. Once the bacon's sort of cooked through a little bit, then we're going to add a very important part of an Italian meat sauce, which is what's called the trinity of vegetables, a sofrito in Italian, which is chopped onion, carrot, and celery, and this underpins nearly all Italian sauces. It's what gives the flavor to the sauce. So first thing into the dish is the onion. And then into here, I'm going to put in the carrot, celery. And again, give this a good stir. Make sure that these vegetables are covered with the oil and the butter, and then and we just cook that for just a couple of minutes, really, again, just to soften those vegetables a little bit. So, once all those vegetables are softened down, then in goes the garlic. A good stir. Oh, you can smell the garlic already, it's lovely. So, all we need now is the meat. And I've got about a kilo here of minced steak. As you can see, I mean, it's got fat in it, but, you know, don't get too hung up on that. We need a little bit of fat in there because that adds in flavour. So the meat goes into the pan and we need to brown all this meat. And that's, you know, it's going to take about 10 minutes to do this. So the meat's all browned through and now I'm going to add my first surprise ingredient which is actually some white wine. Most people will put red wine into a bolognese sauce but that actually puts in a lot of really harsh tannins. If you use white wine you get all those lovely flavours which again are part of the sauce. So we just need just a good glug of white wine and stir that through and then this needs to reduce down by mm, about a third. Once that's reduced down, then here comes the next surprise ingredient, which is milk. And I'm going to add some milk to this. This adds a little bit of creaminess to the sauce, um, but you don't want to be adding all the milk at once. So I'm going to do it in about three lots. And then, of course, we need the tomatoes. A little bit of beef stock. I'm just going to add about half of this to start with. And then for our final surprise ingredient, I'm going to add in a little freshly grated nutmeg. It really richens it up. It's delicious. So that's ready now to be left to cook. It's going to take about two to two and a half hours. Just a long, slow cook, gently bubbling away on the stove. It does need to be partially covered with a lid, which will allow some of the steam to escape. And away you go. Whoa, so this has had um, just over two hours. And as you can see, look at that. Look at this lovely, rich sauce. All I've done about halfway through is adding the rest of the beef stock, which was to prevent it from drying out. So I think it's time to give it a little taste. 
Mm. Mm. Lovely. I'm going to just need just a little bit of salt and a few twists of black pepper. And I'm going to add in here just a good dollop of this rich tomato paste. Stir that through. And the last thing I'm going to add in here is just a few of these lovely parsley leaves. Whoa, look at that belting looking sauce. This needs perhaps another 15 minutes now to finish cooking the sauce. In an ideal world, it would be great if you could leave it overnight because it really does enrich in the flavours. Absolutely fine to eat it now, but you will need to call on a few friends to join you for a delicious supper. Thank you.